Hey guys, just my ROMs here. Today I'll be showing you a little uh, user interface I created that interacts with uh, Emulation Station and uh, Kodi. Basically, what it does, uh, it enables you to run it as a portable. So you can use a USB thumb drive between 16 giga, uh, gigabytes to 32. Um, you may require a larger one depending on how many ROMs uh, you want to load on there. You'll need um, either wide controllers. If you use the wide controllers, you can just plug it straight into uh, the USB of the PC as well. If you use the wireless controllers like an Xbox 360, you'll need an Xbox 360 wireless receiver. If you're using the 6-axis or Sony PS3, you'll need a Bluetooth dongle version 4.0 not 3.0 but 4.0 okay let's uh, have a look at the the exe file let's boot it up okay. first boot it up get the intro logo and then it'll take you into my Facebook now if you notice up the top you've got a navigation bar there you've got exit you've got emu launcher so if you click on that you've got the different uh, launching resolutions you've got Cody so if you click on Cody it should take you straight into Cody portable okay As you can see, it's pretty uh, fluent. There's no lagging in the menus. Let's get out of this. Exit. Okay, next to it you have utilities and drivers. If you scroll down, you've got better DS3. Click on that. This enables you to set up your Xbox 360 and your PS3 controller. Exit out of this. Right below it, you have Xbox 360 wireless controller drivers. So if you don't have the driver, you can download the driver and install it on the PC. Next to it, you got Team Viewer. So Team Viewer is basically you can remote into someone's PC, help them set it up their um, their setup, their ROMs. Underneath it, you got WinSCP, which is an FTP program, so you can transfer files across as well. Right beside it, you got ES System Config, ES Settings Config, Retro Config. You got Retro Arch Core Option Config. You got Retro Arch Exe and the Logs Error. Okay, if you click on ES Systems Config. This is where all your systems are. Um, now, basically, it tells you the extensions that you need to use for each emulator. Like an example, the Taro 2600, you need A26, bin file, ROM. If you scroll down to um, Dreamcast, you need MDS, MDF, bin file, Q, CDI, and GDI. If you scroll down further, say to Genesis, you need the, the, the ROM extensions to be bin file, gen, md, sg. So you got to make sure that the ROM files uh, correctly um, have the correct extension. So let's get out of that. Okay, let's go to uh, RetroArch XE. Let's launch that. Okay, this gives you the option to. Um, this gives you the option to update your cores, update your assets, update the the RetroArch uh, program all altogether. Um, you know, they're all your cores, which basically run RetroArch. Uh, if you scroll down, you got online updater, your shaders, your cheats. Let's get out of that. Go to settings, get a video, you can set your uh, refresh rate to what you want, you can set up the 
the aspect ratio as well as you can see it's changing if you want more of the retro fuel I'd go 4.3 if you want uh, the widescreen which most monitors are these days go 16.9 ok let's get out of that down the bottom here you can um, direct it to where to set the BIOS where the BIOS files are but you can tell it where the downloads, the directory is where the assets are, etc. etc. So you can set all that up too. Let's quit Retro Arch. Okay. Right beside it, you got a folder directory. If you click on ROMs, this is where the ROMs go into. They've got their own literal folder. So if you click on Atari 2600, you can see the ROMs there, and you can see the extensions as I was explaining previously. If you go back, click on uh, Mega Drive, there's nothing there. Mega Drive is basically um, Genesis. So if you go to Genesis, you'll see it in Genesis. As you can see, you know, there's a bin file in there. Okay, next you go to Cody. As you can see, you got your add-ons and your user data. If you want to import from another Cody, that's where you place uh, all the information into. Let's close that up. Scroll down to the bottom, you got BIOS. Click on BIOS. This is where you place all your BIOSes, um, like your PlayStation and a few others. Not every uh, emulator needs a BIOS, but if you don't have the BIOS, then certain emulators will not run. Um, right beside it, you got Minecraft. If you click on Minecraft. It should load up Minecraft as portable. Okay, as you can see, it's loading up. And it's starting up uh, Minecraft. Okay, let's get out of that. Keep in mind, guys, as I said, all this is running uh, off a USB thumb drive um, I said, like I said you can run it off a USB hard drive as well um, nothing gets loaded onto your computer so there's, there's no in installation you know, it, it all runs portable let's, uh, let's launch to the emulator okay as you can see uh, we've just launched emulation station and it's loading up Initially, it takes a little while um, to load up, but once you're in there, it's fine, it's pretty fluent. So, it should be pretty much loaded up. Give it a few, a few more seconds. It is running off a of USB 2.0, so it is going to be a little bit slow. Okay, you've got Amiga, Atari 2600, Atari 7800, Atari Jaguar, Atari Lynx, Sega Dreamcast, Arcade FBA, Sega Game Gear, Nintendo Game Boy, Nintendo Game Boy Color, Nintendo Game Boy Advance, Sega Genesis, which is also known as the Mega Drive, uh, MAME, Arcade Classics, you've got Sega, Master System, you got MSX, you got Nintendo 64, you got NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, Neo Geo Pocket, PSP, PlayStation, TurboGrafx 16, SG 1000, SMW, Super Nintendo, Vectrex, Video Pack, Virtual Boy, Wonder Swan, and Sinclair ZX Spectrum. Okay, let's uh, load up one of the games out of the emulators. Let's go Atari 2600. Let's load up Space Invaders. Okay, as you can see, it's loaded up Space Invaders pretty quick. Let's get out of that. Let's go to another emulator. Okay. Let's go to um, Game Boy Advance. 
Bomberman Max 2. As you can see, it's loaded up fairly quickly. Let's go to Donkey Kong 64. Station Crash Bandicoot 3. Look, some some of the latest jumping are pretty, pretty good. It's mainly uh, the Nintendo 64 show. As you can see, it's loaded up to the PlayStation. Okay, well, let's get out of that. Another neat thing you can do with Emulation Station 2 is um, is basically you can download the artwork, scrape the artwork f within uh, Emulation Station. So if you go into menu you can see Scraper and you just scrape the systems you want to scrape. Uh, select the only missing ones, so I only scrape the missing ones. Let's get out of that. You can change uh, the skins of Emulation Station sound settings, configure inputs, uh, let's get out, quit emulation, yes, okay, basically uh, the free version that I'm going to release for free tab uh, will not have utility drivers, support, configure editor, folder directory or minecraft, all you're going to have is emu launcher, Kodi launcher, um, there won't be no BIOS is in, uh, attached and there'll be no ROMs either. Those there you're going to have to um, find yourselves. Uh, for my subscribers, you'll get the full menu up there, that what you see now. If, uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.